Hey everybody, it's your Sam and I'm here with another video. I want to give you a little bit of an update on Hold My Raccoon 2022 and give a few book reviews on this video as well. So without further ado, let's go ahead and kind of jump in. January was kind of weird. <laughs> I don't exactly know what happened. I'm still trying to assess what went wrong and what went right it was it was just a, a weird kind of month thing i i wasn't motivated much to do anything and it it kind of showed in some things there was also a kind of writer's block thing going on kind of a creative block going on and it's kind of understandable when you think about it because of certain days that were coming up but at the same time no excuses <laughs> I do need to learn to give myself a little bit of grace too because that was also a, a kind of goal of mine. So yeah, I'm, I'm torn between giving myself a little bit of grace, a little bit of leeway here and being like, okay, suck it up, you need to do better. <laughs> Maybe I'm going to do both. We'll see which one wins out and which wolf I feed. My goal was to hit at least 20,000 words per month for kind of a, a good goal for Hold My Raccoon uh, 2022 and that didn't quite happen in January. So I'm hoping on a good month I'll be able to catch up and surpass the 20k in a month. For January I had 11,326 words. Yeah, it was not quite there, but it's 11,326 words that I did not have on a new project that I'm, I'm working on, which is, it, it's a boon, I do admit, but it's also not me reaching the goal that I had so that I could continue reaching the goals for the year. Uh, January is kind of my month to set the pace for the year. <laughs> And if this is going to be the pace, I'm going to have to reevaluate some things here. I did manage to write a medium article, which is good. I kind of wanted to get at least two per month, but I managed to get one. I was doing a lot of research on medium and posting articles there and kind of figuring out what I wanted to do with that forum with, with my medium articles. Now, I think I've got a, plan figured out and we will we will go from there. I did meet my YouTube goal of finding collaborations, getting my toes further out there in the author tube world, <laughs> if you want to call it that. Uh, I have planned a couple of collaborations and I plan on uh, doing some more and we will continue to grow, we will continue to thrive, we will continue to become a stronger and more close-knit community. If you know, I have anything to do with it kind of thing. I have found a lot of new author tubers too. Uh, at least they are new to me and hopefully they will be new to you. And with some of these collaborations I'm doing, I'm hoping that they will also be part of our community and be welcomed and thrive. I am about one eighth <laughs> of the way through my first project of the year. That's the one that I got 11,000 words on, a little over 11,000 words on. And that again is a little bit behind on the whole publishing path that I wanted to do this year. But for this month, I want to try to hit the 20k mark. If not, do a little bit better just to try to bump up my numbers back to where they should be for the good goal for Hold My Raccoon 2022. I will link that video in the cards or at the end screen if it allows me to do an end screen. My last video it didn't allow me to do an end screen which was kind of weird. I'll figure it out later. So with that 20,000 added in onto that particular project maybe it will be closer to a third at least. Maybe even halfway through. It's going to be a smaller book I think. And I did lay awake at night thinking you know, this would be a really good series. And then I shut that down quickly because I don't need another series in my head. <laughs> series are hard, y'all. And with the way the whole brain was going that night, it was going to end up being like a 12 book series. And I don't, I don't need that in my life right now. I don't know if y'all want that in your life. And we will not voyage into that part of our lives. 
And also with February, I am going to finish reworking the ninja stories. I worked a little bit in that on that in January, but I hope to get them fully developmental edited to where the stories are kind of flowing well together and where their story is like really funny and then the next story is kind of mediocre funny and then maybe one's a little bit more serious and it goes back up to mediocre and then like really funny and and stuff like that because it is more of a comedic collection of short, short stories and then it is anything else. I kind of want to go with that flow. There are a couple that are dry humor-ish or very adult humor-ish and those are going to be you know like the downward swipe <laughs> of the wave. Anyway we've we've got that going for us and I also want to reread I'm No Hero book one, polish it up a little bit more so that maybe I can start querying it soon. And I also want to reread I'm No Hero book two so I can start on edits on it in March. Luckily I'm No Hero book two is not over 200,000 close to 300,000 words like book one was. It's a little closer to 180,000. On to the book reviews. Now granted I have not finished that many books in the past six months because of life and these four I've actually finished. So the first one is Between Earth and Sky by Amanda Skinnendor. Sorry if I butchered that name. <laughs> but this one is kind of an emotional roller coaster. It hits hard especially if you know some of the things our Native Americans were put through and this book touches on that a little bit and so a little bit about it. Uh, Alma who is the main character has distanced herself from her childhood at the Stover school until she sees a newspaper headline that pulls her right back into her past. The school was run by her father and used as a way to assimilate the Native American children into the whole white world. And we just know that robs them of their culture, their names, their customs, their family, their language, everything. She's used as an example for the children to follow. And while well, she befriends them or she, she tries to befriend them and she kind of assimilates to them a little bit more than some of them assimilate to white man's world. The book dances between flashbacks of Alma growing up among these children to her present day and the issue that she is faced with when one of her childhood friends is in danger of losing his life. It's a great book. I highly recommend it. And if you get this one in particular, it's very well made. It has like a canvas kind of feel to it. Not really canvas, but that's the best explanation I can give you if you haven't felt how paper is made <laughs> and went through that process like on Earth Day or something like that. It's very antique -y feeling and the way it's cut and everything. You also get like a, a dance card and a photo of the some of the Native American children. So yeah it's it's a very interesting book. Again it touches in the feels hard but it's it's lovely and I highly highly recommend it especially if you want to learn a little bit more about the injustices that Native Americans went through. Okay next one is Sky in the Deep by Adrian Young and this one is a Viking story and that's the reason why my husband picked it up because he knows I adore Vikings and anything to do with Vikings I I, I gobble up. Hence the reason why I have binge watched The Last Kingdom twice at least. We'll not go into that. <laughs> you follow the main character Aelin who is an Askin warrior who is captured when she sees something shocking in the latest battlefield. It's her dead brother walking around and fighting for the enemy. She has to find a way to survive with the Ricky who are the enemy clan uh, that captured her and that her brother is living with all while figuring out why her brother betrayed her and their clan. But another greater threat arises and she must find a way to unite the clans against it. It's a quick read. There are some 
little nitpicky things that, you know, there, there are moments where I find her to be a little bit unbelievable. Like why, what happened to, you know, the strong, I'm going to fight and kill everything in certain moments, but there is, there, it, it, it's, there is that. It's still a good book. Again, it's still good for a good read and it does have some romance in it. <laughs> so that's always a plus. All right. Now the next one is Opium and Absinthe by Lydia Kang. This one kind of surprised me. It's one of the books that I got from Scribbler and I didn't think I would be really interested in it because of the whole opium aspect and absinthe as aspect to it. Opium and Absinthe is all about Tilly and Tilly investigating her sister's death. When her sister lying dead with her body drained of blood with two puncture wounds on her neck, Tilly's mind jumps to the conclusion it must have been vampires. Not that she's a fan of the recent publication of Dracula at all. But in order to find her sister's murderer, Tilly becomes addicted to finding the truth no matter what cost, including her own health, as she gets addicted to laudanum, which is opium. Who can she trust who murdered her sister? And you can find that out when you read Opium and Absinthe. I adore this book because the pace is amazing to me. And you can get lost in the fog that is Opium and Absinthe that Tilly goes through even though she's like seriously hyper focused on this case. And she goes through all the emotions of someone addicted to a drug and all the doubts and all the accusations and all the hurt and pain and fog that comes with that. I highly recommend this. I adored this book. The best read that I've had so far, I finished this in basically, I don't know, maybe five hours. Uh, it did take me two days because I didn't have a five hour span to do it, but it did take me two days to read it. And that is Starfish by Lisa Phipps. Thank you, Barrett, for recommending this book and, and bringing it to my attention. It's a middle grade book and it's done in prose, both of which I don't read that much anymore. But oh my gosh, <laughs> does this book hit you in the feels? I mean, it makes you realize some of the things that you might have went through as a child, or it makes you realize what children can deal with and how evil children can be because my gosh, and how evil even adults can be to children and not even really realize it. Ellie is absolutely my heart. She's the, she's the main character. Ellie is the main character. She is big, beautiful, and, and, and yes, she, she finds her voice in this book and she finds her space in the world. She deals with incessant bullying, even from her own mother. But thankfully she has a couple of people by her side, including like her best friend and her dad who help her find her inner strength and her voice and her space, her confidence. <laughs> She becomes herself and she becomes who she has always should have been. And she teaches the bullies all around her that she's there to take up her space and speak her voice. And I adore it. And it, it really hits hard. It hits home. All the notes in it are just sublime. And I can't recommend this book anymore. This book should be in every library. It should be in every school. It should be, I hate to say that it should be read in every middle school class because with it being a, you have to read this, people, the kids aren't going to want to read it. But at the same time, it's like, I want this to be in every child's hands in this, in this world. So yeah, it, it, it's, it's that good. Highly recommend it. You need to go buy it now if you haven't already period. That is pretty much all I have for you today. I'm hoping to get back on track with Hold My Raccoon 2022 and we will continue to work towards our goals. We will continue to work towards our challenges that we have set for ourselves, and we will do fine. We will be good, right? Right. As always, be kind to one another, stay safe, keep writing, keep being creative, and I will see you next time.